uh, how did I develop my personal value system? Um, my family had a huge role, obviously, because the time I grew up to the time I was 18 years old moving out of my house daily, I was being corrected on the littlest things, even down to my grammar, how I spoke, how I spoke to people. Um, so definitely my parents and my brothers had a huge impact on my value system. Um, and, you know, the way I look at life really comes from the people I've been around, the people I've spoken to in my life. Um, through the interactions I've had with other people, I've, I've generated these opinions on certain things and, on, and I've placed value on certain things based off the people around me. Uh, the three most important values in my life would definitely be my faith. Uh, definitely, my faith is my biggest priority. Uh, and how I, how I go about my everyday value, uh, my everyday, um, and how I live and how I treat people. Uh, my, my second most important value would definitely be uh, my education as of right now. And that's because I have a goal to support my family when I, when I, am, when I find the people I want to make my family. Um, and so my education is huge because I want to be the dad that can give everything to their kids without having to say no because of money and lack of means. And my third is just uh, pure happiness. And, and it's not in money and, and materialistic things. I want to be genuinely happy and I want, to, I want to be content with my life in a way that I can sit in my house every night before my kids go to sleep knowing that, that this is exactly what I want and I'm, I'm living my dream. Uh, what is my family's influence on my personal values? Again, they were huge. They were, they were definitely the primary reason I, I am who I am today. Uh, and we're, very, we're a very close family and we spend so much time together. Uh, growing up in a, in a house full of boys, all we did was play sports and all we did was, was rough house and, and joke around. And I think that's where I get my sense of humor from. And I feel like that's where I, that's where I gain my, my loyalty, my happiness, my respect is, is from those family uh, encounters and, and the way I was brought up. Uh, any specific experiences or events in my, in my life, uh, definitely. Um, I've, I've volunteered at soup kitchens, I've, I've volunteered at community events for, for the less fortunate, and every time, every time my world is shaken to see how, how good I have it, and it, it really emphasizes the, the compassion I have for other people, or the blessings of, of stability and uh, my ability to have a sense of humor, and uh, all those experiences tied into uh, making me who I am today. Social workers may disclose confidential information when appropriate with valid consent from a client or person legally authorized to consent on behalf of a client. I believe that uh, you shouldn't shouldn't give away the information. Uh, whether the client said you could or not, is, uh, there's a social worker's responsibility not to give away information no matter what they get from the client. It's always supposed to remain confidential, so I don't think that it should be. Given up. I believe that you should you should be allowed to disclose information in events such as an emergency if they're incapable of giving their own direct uh, consent. I feel like you should be able to help them in any way you can. Social workers should, under no circumstances, engage in sexual activities or sexual contact with current clients, whether such contact is consensual or forced. Uh, I believe that in some cer certain circumstances it should be allowed because depending on social workers should under no circumstances engage in sexual activities or sexual contact with current clients whether such contact is consensual or forced. I believe in some circumstances you should be allowed to have sexual relations with a client because uh, some, some clientele base is is just to have someone to talk to or to be uh, to help with their mental stability. So I don't believe sexual encounters will hurt that fact. Uh, I actually don't agree. I don't believe that uh, sexual relations between a client and a, a worker is 
is acceptable. Uh, it's a business type thing, and it'll, I think it'll ruin the, the whatever you're trying to get accomplished, where you're just talking or trying to, it, it brings in feelings, sexual content brings in feelings, and I don't think that it'll be, it should be allowed. Social workers should provide services and represent themselves as competent only within the boundaries of their education, training, license, certification, consultation received, supervised experience, or other relevant personal experience. I definitely agree with that. I think you definitely shouldn't talk to someone that you're giving professional advice to if you have no experience or no education in, in that area. Um, I, I definitely think that you should only use information that you either know firsthand or you were taught in a classroom. Uh, I disagree. I actually think that you learn a lot of things throughout your profession, uh, especially with experience. You gain different uh, little nicks and knacks throughout the way and things that you may hear and now you may not actually took classes or been skilled in that subject, but there are other things that you might be able to give advice to somebody about that you necessarily may not have studied. So I think you can still give information like that way. Social workers should not use derogatory language in their written or verbal communication to or about clients. Social workers should use accurate and respectful language in all communications to and about clients. Uh, I definitely agree with that. I feel like you should keep a professional front regardless of your feelings or the language you use outside of uh, your profession. Uh, I know many people who cuss like sailors and use derogatory terms but when it becomes professional and they need to make money that they are able to use professional language and be courteous and respectful to all people. Uh, while you always want to keep a professional manner all the time with your clients, um, if, I mean you shouldn't curse like a sailor but if you're talking to somebody like a certain client that you can relate to, I'm, I mean I don't see no problem with saying a curse word here and there, trying to relate, get on their level and just uh, help the communication between you two. Like why, like I said, you shouldn't curse and use that word consistently, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think it's a bad idea to use curse word every now and then. Social workers should treat colleagues with respect and should respect accurately and fairly the qualifications, views, and obligations of colleagues. While I agree with that you should respect everyone's views, I, I feel as if just because someone views differently that you should have to act a certain way or or, or go about something uh, in a manner that you wouldn't see fit um, to your views or to your your personal morals and, and values. I do agree that you should treat your colleagues with respect. I mean that's the people that you work with most likely on a daily basis and without coming together in the communication that you need to get stuff done and you might not get everything that you need to get done so yes you should treat your colleagues in all with respect. Social workers should not take advantage of a dispute between a colleague and an employer to obtain a position or otherwise advance the social worker's own interests. Um, I don't think, I don't agree with that. Um, oh, sh social workers should not take advantage of a dispute between a colleague and an employer to obtain a position or otherwise advance the social worker's own interests. Um, if you see two of your colleagues uh, arguing or getting into something, you shouldn't get in that to try to take advantage of it and uh, gain um, something in your company just to be better or try to get you a position and talk bad about your colleagues. You have to stick together and stay in mind your own business. Personally, I think you should take every opportunity to come out a better person. So if you feel as if doing something to go behind a coworker or a colleague's back to better your position in the company, I feel like you definitely should take every opportunity handed to you. Social workers should seek the advice and counsel of colleagues whenever the consultation is in the best interest of clients. Um, no, you shouldn't ask for help whenever you're trying to help a client. Uh, I feel like your colleague could like use that as advantage, like saying you don't know what you're talking about and you asking them for advice, so you may owe them or something. So no, you should not ask for help. I think you should ask for help. I mean, I think it's only appropriate to ask a colleague, say maybe they've been in that uh, experience firsthand and you just ask them for a little bit of insight or maybe you've never come across a case that you're dealing with and uh, need some help. Social workers should take Adequate measures to discourage, prevent, expose, and correct 
the unethical conduct of colleagues. Yes, I agree, you should. If you see somebody doing something wrong, you should expose them and try to help them in any way you can. Like I said, you have to work together and just do what you can for the better of the company and better yourself and better for everybody. I think if it's going to better the business that you might as well just join Jump Ship and, uh, and, and encourage it and help out in any way you can, even if it means break the law or go against moral values, anything to better the company. Social workers who provide supervision to evaluate supervisees' performance in a manner that is fair and respectful. Um, if you, um, no. Social workers who provide supervision to evaluate supervisees' performance in a manner that is fair and respectful. Of course, uh, if you're evaluating somebody, you should always be uh, respectful and mind their values and just do the right thing, really. Um, if there's somebody you're working with, of course, you always want to keep that level of respect between you two so in the future y'all can always uh, have that connection. I think you should play favorites because you want to enjoy who you work around. So if you are a supervisor and you play favorites, of course all of your favorites are going to look good. So you'll advance their career, make them look good, thus putting the people around you that you like instead of the people you don't like. Social workers should take reasonable steps to ensure that documentation and records is accurate and reflects the services provided. Um, nah, you don't necessarily have to. If it doesn't have to be accurate or true, uh, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do, no matter what, just to get ahead. So do what you got to do, like I said. I think you definitely should keep records because if someone tries to sue you, you can go back and you can be like, look, this is, these are the facts. You can't lie, and there's really like no loopholes around your license or any any of that stuff. Um, how did I develop my value system? Uh, just throughout the years, uh, with time, getting older, picking up things here and there. Of course, it started with my parents. Uh, they instilled values and all in me from a young age, and I just kept it going and just try to be the best I can. Um, what are three most important value in your life? Um, I would have to say, of course, family. Uh, my family is a big impact on my life. Always has been and always will be. Uh, every decision that I make comes through my family and I make sure I represent them the right way. Um, another value in my life that is really important is God. First and foremost, I can't do nothing without him, and I thank him for everything every day, everything that I have to do in life. It just credit all to him. And another value in my life is just, uh, I don't know, faith, friendships, happiness, uh, some of the examples, um, success. I just want to be successful. Everything I do, I go hard in it, make sure I um, have to be successful in life, school, on, off the court, and anything. Um, what is your family's influence on your personal values? Kind of answered that. Uh, my family has a major influence on everything that I do in my life. My mom, my dad, my sisters. Um, I just value what they say, and they have never led me wrong this far. So I'll continue to value them and uh, respect their decision and do the best that I can and be the best that I can be. Are there specific experience or experiences or events in your life that help shape your value system? Um, nothing really specifically that has helped me or shape my value system, but I just thrive to be the best that I can be every day and to live my life the right way. Of course, I'm not perfect and do everything right all the time. But as far as, I, as long as I strive to that, I feel good about myself and I just continue to thrive and be the best that I can be.